Graphic tablets are some of the most useful tools that you can have as a photographer or as an editor or a retoucher. And they've been around for quite a while now. Throughout the years, they've been coming up with different variations of graphic tablets that come with unique features that are actually really helpful for whoever uses them. And today I'm going to take a look at the new graphic tablet, the largest of its kind, with a twist of convenience. Today we'll take a look at the new Huion Inspiro Giano and I'll give you a sneak peek of my retouching workflow for architectural photography. So this is the Huion Giano, and as you can see, it's one heck of a big tablet. But there are a lot of benefits in using a bigger tablet whenever you're doing some really detail-intensive work. This is a 16.9 by 10.5 tablet with a thickness of 0.35 inches. And the effective area goes as big as 13.6 by 8.5 inches. That is one huge surface for your editing. Now on this side, you can see six customizable buttons that you can of course program into almost anything you need as shortcuts for your editing software as well as some system preferences. And here we have what would be a unique feature for this new line of tablets. This is actually an LCD screen, an indicator about connectivity, about battery status, and of course the Huion logo. On this side is the single power button and right here is the single USB-C port. Now why does it have a screen? Well, it's because it's Bluetooth 5.0 connected. That means that you don't necessarily need the cable whenever you're using it and you're only gonna have to plug it in with this L-type USB-C whenever you're gonna charge the device. But most of the time you can use it without the cable and you can use it in any position that you want. Now aside from the cable, of course, it comes with its own pen that is similar to the other Huion tablets that I have gotten recently. It doesn't require any batteries and it is very lightweight and gives a good grip with, of course, two customizable buttons on the pen itself. And the stand also serves as the storage for some extra nibs as well as the ring that you use to remove and replace the nibs. Now it also actually comes with a half glove that I've never taken out of the box. Why? Simply because I haven't ever felt the need to use it because this surface is actually much more resistant to fingerprints and moisture so I've never really felt the need to use the glove. Now setting it up is actually really easy. The first thing you have to do is long press this only button and it turns the device on. And you can see that the Bluetooth logo is blinking so it means that it is already in pairing mode. Then all you have to do is pair the device just like how you would pair your mouse or a new keyboard. And you can see Inspiro Giano 126 and you're connected. Of course, the next thing you would have to do is go to the Huion tablet app and it will automatically detect the tablet. And as you press the custom buttons right here, you can of course assign the different functions that you can use. Of course, you can assign it to a keyboard key, a mouse key, a switch to run programs, applications, multimedia, precision mode, pan and scroll, quick menu, or fix pressure sensitivity, or you can simply turn off the button. And of course, you can program all of these different buttons to specific shortcuts that you use. For me, for example, I use the healing tool a lot on Photoshop, which is why that is my first key. The next for me is the marquee tool. Next is zooming in, zooming out. My second to the last button is of course a shortcut to brushes. And the last one is the almighty undo shortcut. Now when it comes to the pen, I set this one to the right click button, which is actually a shortcut for brush sizes. And the next one is actually a shortcut to the space bar because it helps me navigate throughout the frame. Now one thing you can also adjust is pressure sensitivity. But for me, for most photographers, you don't really have to change this so much because the amount of 
pressure that we use or the variations in pressure that we use don't really make so much of a difference. If you are an illustrator, however, then this would be a very important step. Now, another important setting step is actually setting up your work area. If you're using multiple displays, then you can, of course, select which display the tablet is actually working on. And you can also rotate that to 90 degrees, 180, and 270 degrees if you want to use it in any other way. You can of course use it vertically or totally upside down, especially if you are maybe left-handed and you want the buttons on your right. So here I have this architectural photograph that I shot a couple months back when I was testing a lens. And basically what I want to do here is just do a bit of necessary cleanup because there are some clutter that we'd want to take out whenever we're shooting architecture. Now I've already rendered this in black and white, but I haven't done any of the focal or the local adjustments that you are gonna see in this workflow. So first thing I do is I zoom in and basically I start looking for anything that I would want to remove or clean up. Like this one, for example, there's some sort of a discolored window in this building and you just wanna be able to take that out. So I am just going to adjust the size of my brush and I am using the healing tool or the spot healing tool. And as easy as that, you are able to take out that irregularity. And of course your computer does its job in taking out whatever you mean to take out. This is something that is kind of artificial intelligence when it comes to using Photoshop. This is actually content-aware fill. Now, this of course is not a perfect process. So it totally depends on you how meticulous you're gonna be, simply because this is actually a building with a lot of glass panels and you're never gonna run out of unwanted reflections. Now, of course, the crucial part are these power lines. And this is something I really hate when it comes to shooting architecture in the city because simply they are just always in the way. Now there are many tools that you can use of course one of the most common tools that I use aside from the healing brush is the spot healing tool. Now one thing I have to say about this tablet is that I wish it had a few more buttons because I actually ran out of buttons to use. Considering that this is actually a rather large tablet, I would have wanted it to have maybe two, two more buttons or maybe three more buttons. Now this is what I would call the unfabulous side of architectural photography, especially when you're shooting in a city or a country like mine because our power lines or our power cables are not underground so they often get in the way of the shot which is a shame because a lot of our buildings are actually really good when it comes to global editing i rarely ever spend too much time but whenever I have to clean up or retouch these photos, this is what takes my time. So it's actually up to you if you're just going to clean up around the building that you shot or you're going to take out all of the lines. But I guess by now you get the point. Now I can definitely say that having a larger surface for the tablet means a lot. It means I don't really have to zoom in and out so much when it comes to, you know, getting into the details and avoiding taking out some important details as well. Since I'm able to keep my brush size relatively small, I don't have to undo so much. And 
And perhaps that's also thanks to the graphics card that I use because it is somehow optimized by that. Anyway, this video is gonna go very long if you're gonna watch me take out all of these wires. But I think by now you get the point of what I do and how I do retouching for architectural photography. And there we go. If you have any questions about the Huion Giano or about retouching architectural photography, then do leave your questions in the comment section. If you've gotten this far into the video, thank you for watching. Of course, my name is Nico Valenzuela. I am a landscape and architectural photographer, and this channel talks about landscape and architectural photography and all the gear and tech surrounding it. Thanks for watching.